past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izuku Midoriya, who in the last part broke into a hospital that his mother was being held at. Now, over the course of the last decade, if not even more than that, closer to 15 years, Inko has been treated very poorly. People have seen her and the way she does talk about it. She's in here for murdering her husband and trying to murder her, well, four-year-old son. No. No one was going to listen to her. She just was a perfectly normal woman who fucking lost it one day. And, every single day, ever since the incident, people have been telling her that she's crazy. And, that Midoriya was a normal boy. Midoriya, in the last part, reassured her that that is not true. And, that he is indeed a monster. Now, Inko, she felt the weight of the world fall off of her shoulders and back. As, before... Midoriya and her can escape. Midoriya killed her in an instant and her asses were scattered to the wind. Now, with that being said, Midoriya has summoned his steed. Which, because of Midoriya's rather specific taste for the modern era, has taken on the form of a motorcycle. As Midoriya was driving down the street with it. Now, we will cut to about later on to the day, where Midoriya, he arrives at Yairuza Manor, and he would walk in as people are trying to tell him that he can't simply just come and go as he does please, to which he does inform them all that he really can. Now, as Midoriya does walk in, he does get directly into the private library. Or the study where Mel Melissa and Momo are both currently talking. Now, as this does happen, Midoriya, you would burst through the door as he does see these two. Now, Midoriya, yeah. He does look at both of them and ask Melissa, what is she doing here? Hmm? Me? That's quite simple. I started a journey back after I felt a peculiar feeling. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, it does. But I'm confused. <laughs> well, it is nothing you should be concerned about. Now, Let's go over what's happening currently. You are aware of it, yes? Sea life is dead? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. What I would say is he does walk forwards and go to sit down directly across from Melissa. As you do have Momo, which is all Midoriya's right. Midoriya informing her that he has seen a lot. And he's beginning to notice certain things. Hmm, that is true. However, there is a more troubling predicament that we do find ourselves in. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So, war, famine, and death. We're missing one. Hmm? <laughs> yes, we are. And I was actually about to start our search for that one. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
I just confirmed that they're alive, in case you thought they were dead. <laughs> Please. No mortal can kill us. Besides, I'm sure that they're alive. Now, Melissa will continue talking. As Midoriya, he does get asked the question about how he summoned his horse. Now, Midoriya, he does explain it. As he does tell them about what he did do. And you do actually have Momo, who was quite shocked. Midoriya purposely murdered his mother, while she accidentally killed her father. So, what does this mean? Now, Momo, she's stunned by that part. And you do actually have Melissa, who would go on informing Momo that she herself is the cause of her mother's death. Now, Momo is taken aback by that as well since they're beginning to see a pattern with the four of them, or the three of them. And it would be right to assume this stretches to the fourth horseman. Now, with that being said, you do actually have people, as they are speculating exactly who it could be. Momo ordering some maids and butlers to bring in a giant board. And they can at least try to begin their search. Now, this would take a few days. And eventually these days would turn into weeks. As we do cut to about four days later. Where? Midoriya, yeah. Today he's going to head out and go on a bit of a, you could call it, vacation. Him and Momo are both going to be driving down the highway and trying to see if they can find the horseman. They're going to see if they can find the horseman just by simply traveling around Japan. Since you do have... Well, Midoriya and Momo both from Japan. And you do have Melissa who claims that she's from America. However, at the same time, her father, David Shield, has spent time in Japan before. So, three for three. Now, we actually have Midoriya who's packing his bags. As he's getting everything together, and he does actually go to grab the golden ring he bought back at the antique shop. Him putting it on as he does, check to see if it still does fit. Now, Midoriya, he's packed his bag as he does go to bring it up and throw it over his shoulder. As he does go to step outside of his room. Now, he's stopped by Mitsuki and Bakugo. As they do sit Midoriya down at the kitchen table, and they both do seem to be stressed out and, well, they're avoiding eye contact. Now, Midoriya, he does explain to him that he's pretty busy right now. And that him and a girl were going to go travel down the coastline. Now, this was a surprise by Mitsuki. She didn't expect that out of Midoriya. And then again... He's changed a lot within the last month. Is this girl to blame? No. We do actually have where... Mitsuki, she does release the information. The hospital that Midoriya's mother was staying at... It was attacked by a villain. They don't exactly know what happened there, but... Her room was obliterated. And scorched completely. Now, Midori, he does just sit there. As he does, just blink at Mitsuki before he does turn his head slightly. Asking her if that was it. Hmm? Izuku? It... it is. Are you alright? Are you okay? 
I'm fine. Besides, that lady, she's not my mother. Hmm? Izuku, listen to me. You shouldn't say that about her. Now, Mitsuki does watch the way Midoriya's react, along with Bakugo. Bakugo initially thought Midoriya was in shock, and he was going to get ready to jump in and basically help his best friend. However, he froze hearing that Midoriya just disowned his own mother, especially after she died. Now, Midori does go to stand up and tell Mitsuki that he's leaving. Her trying to stop him and tell him just to sit down and try to process it, since it hasn't sunk into his head yet. Now, Mitsuki does try to follow Midoriya out of the door, as when she does actually go to grab him by his jacket to stop him, you do actually have where Midoriya, he does turn his head and stare directly at her in the face. As Midoriya, he cast pure fear into her mind. And for a split second, Mitsuki sees exactly what Inko did see. For one second, that, well, fabric she grabbed from Midoriya, it felt like hardened steel. Along with that, she felt like she was looking into the, well, eyes of a monster. Along with that, she swore she saw him wearing a helmet. And it was drenched in blood. Now, Mitsuki, she actually does go to jump back. As she does go to look down at her hand and then look directly back up at Midoriya. Who, casually, just hovers on the other side of the railing. Telling Mitsuki that she was very good to him. So, he's at least going to say goodbye properly. Now. As Midoriya, he does descend, you do actually have Bakugo who would come running out. As Mitsuki, she just stares down at her hands. And she does remember some of the conversations she had with Inko. Her baby's a monster. Her baby's a monster. He needs to die. He needs to be killed. And he needs to be stopped from ending the world. Casting it in the fire. Now, for one second, Mitsuki does connect the dots. The way Inko's room was, it was scorched. Like an explosion went off. Or even a fire? That can't be right. Now, as Midoriya does land, you do have his motorcycle. Which, Midoriya, he does summon as you have Momo, who does come walking up. Now, Momo does ask Midoriya if he's ready to go. And Midoriya, he would just say yes. As he goes to turn his head and look back up towards the apartment building. Where Mitsuki, she's looking down at him. And Midori, he does just look up. As he does smile a creepy smile. And Mitsuki, she does go to back away. Her heart leaping into her throat. Now, Midori would get on the bike. As the two, they do leave. Now, with that being said, we do cut over to Melissa's shield back over at the mansion. And we do have where she's currently connecting more and more dots about potential people that the Horsemen of Pestilence could be. Now, she tries to narrow it down to where the start of the plague came from. And it's obvious that Ireland would be on the chopping block first. So... Whoever the horseman is, is connected to here. However, then all of a sudden it jumped across the ocean. That part's not too good. So, 
she's going to have to comb through the records of every single person there. And afterwards, she's have to cut it down for certain things that she might be able to know. Clearly, they have to know enough about disease to understand how to make something like this. On purpose or by accident. Along with that, there is even the idea that, well, yeah. The idea that pestilence, it's simply just around. It can jump from anywhere, anywhere, from one simple carrier. The task at hand seems simple enough. However, it's laying it all out and trying to execute it is the hard part. So, Melissa begins to comb through the records. Along with many different people, Momo has hired to investigate the matter as well. Now, with that being said, let us cut back over to Midoriya and Momo, who they have currently just hopped onto the highway. And Momo, she's a bit surprised about exactly how fast the motorcycle can actually go. Now, she's also asking questions to Midoriya about this well, whole thing. Does he really expect them to be able to get down the coastline or travel on the highway reliably safe? Since people have talked about how in smaller areas outside the large cities, without the need for pro heroes, yeah, there has been a bit of bandits and crimes on the highway. Now, Midoriya, he would tell her that he's pretty sure they're going to be fine. Besides, both of them can literally take a semi-truck to the face and call that a simple breeze. So, he doesn't see why she's so concerned about it all. Along with that, they can fly. Now, as Midoriya is dodging out of the way of vehicles that have been blown up or just left on the highway, Melissa, she does continue talking. Or Momo, my bad. And she does even ask Midori a few things. As she wants to learn a bit more about his origin. Since they will be working together. Now, Midori would share exactly his past. He was a perfectly normal boy up until the day he thought his quirk unlocked. And him then going over the entire incident, along with talking about how he just actually took care of that loose end a few days ago. Hmm? Took care of it? Yeah. What do you think I meant? Well, I just wanted to clear the air about that. You killed her on purpose. And she killed your father. Yes, she did. I feel sad knowing she's dead. Hmm? Why? You killed her. I don't know. Don't you feel sad? I mean, you murdered your dad almost a month ago. That was an accident. I know. Ironically, it's how we met, though. Yeah. I was scared the first time I saw you. I heard flying quirks were rare. And seeing somebody else with one, I panicked. Not used to it, you know? I can understand. Anyways, so. Now. Midoriya, he does actually look up ahead. They're about to pass through a territory where there's a lot more flaming cars on the road, and there seems to be a lot more damage to the area. Midoriya telling her that he's pretty sure they're about to go right into a trap. As Midoriya, he does bring up one of his hands, and he creates a weapon. 
Midoriya creating a giant longsword. As Momo, she does sort of just sit there behind Midoriya. And she is asking exactly what he's going to be doing. Midoriya bring up his other hand as he actually does go to put his hand down onto the accelerator. The bike, having the gas tank, get covered in fire as the tires begin to leave flaming tracks behind him. Now, Midoriya goes to stand up on the motorcycle, his foot directly on the spot in between the handlebars, as his right shoe is on the seat, and Midoriya's entire form gets covered in fire. Now, Momo does watch on. And she is curious. As Midoriya, yeah. He's telling her exactly what's going to happen next. And if she doesn't listen, then they're going to have a little bit of a problem. Now, eventually they do come across the people who were going to ambush them. And Midoriya, he does not slow down the motorcycle. In fact, it simply does just speed up. As the people who create a wall along the highway, yeah, they didn't expect this. They expected this guy to slow down and try to bargain with them. However, he's staying on top of a motorcycle that's speeding up. And whenever he got closer, he just threw out his hand and blew the wall apart. Along with Midoriya, as the bike speeds through the open wall, he starts to cut down anyone in their way. As Momo herself, whenever people do start to chase after them, she spins around on the motorcycle and begins to use her powers. Her rotting people's flesh as they're driving, and even beginning to corrode the metal in their vehicles. As many of them break down, or are blown the fuck up by Midoriya and his flaming hand as the two do continue to travel down the coastline. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that is a good point to leave this off of, and I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing night. Catch you guys in the next part.